today we are discussing the name suggests it's a system that carries three basically three tracks one is spinothalamic tract which is again divided into anterior spinothalamic and lateral spinothalamic the lateral spinothalamic it carries pain and temperature while the anterior spinothalamic tract it carries the crude touch carries the crude touch then coming to the spinotectal tract also called the spinomesencephalic tract which uh, starts from the spinal cord and terminates in the colliculi superior inferior colliculi and then the spinoreticular tract which goes from spinal cord to the reticular formation and it's needed for the alertness and awakening of the brain so let's start with the pathway of the tract so when we start with the pain pathway we have to remember that it is uh, produced by it is uh, sensed by a receptor called nociceptors so these are nociceptors so the receptors responsible for the pain signals are called nociceptors and they are free nerve endings they are free nerve endings so whenever there is any tissue damage any tissue damage what happens whenever there is release of chemicals the chemicals like bradykinins histamine prostaglandins very very important prostaglandins glandins then serotonin and substance p so substance p then serotonin and don't forget potassium ions potassium substance p serotonin prostaglandins histamine bradykinins all these are chemicals that are released whenever there is any sort of tissue damage so whenever there is tissue damage these chemicals are released and what they will do they will they will activate the free nerve endings they will activate the free nerve endings so this free nerve endings they can be of two types okay the pain is carried by two type of fibers so one is a delta fibers it can go through a delta fibers which are large okay a delta fibers which are large and which are thin large thin but it's myelinated remember it's myelinated fibers so myelinated fibers so, so it goes to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and it terminates at the dorsal horn so this a delta fibers which are myelinated they carry the fast pain as you know this is myelinated fibers so they carry fast pain okay fast but mild remember fast and mild so it depends upon the type of pain so some sort of pain which are slow pain and it is very severe kind of variety so those type of pain fibers they are carried by c fibers c fibers so group c fibers which are unmyelinated fibers unmyelinated fibers and like the a delta fibers they also terminate in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord now here this is the first order neuron this is the first order neuron which is a delta fibers and c fibers so here it terminates so from this dorsal horn of the spinal cord the second order neuron starts so second order neurons cross to the anterior and lateral it cross to the anterior and lateral so this is the anterior side so anterior and lateral side of the spinal cord okay so this is the second order neurons second order neurons which starts from anterior from the dorsal horn and it start, goes to the opposite side of the spinal cord that is anterior and lateral side similarly they also goes to the anterior and lateral side and then they ascends the essence right up to the thalamus where bpl ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus and terminate there so this, this is second order neuron okay similarly the a delta fibers also essence through the lateral and terminates in the thalamus ventral posterior lateral so this is the second order neuron so this is the second order neuron now here most of the times so it's not necessary that these second order neurons they immediately cross here in the opposite side 
So most of the time, these pain fibers, this A delta and C fibers, they ascend or descend. So they might ascend or they might descend, and then it cross to the opposite side, and they ascend. Or sometimes they ascend and goes to the dorsal valve on the opposite side, and then it cross to the opposite side. So this. Not all pain fibers they immediately cross to the opposite sides. So some pain, some pain fibers they cross to the opposite sides. Some pain fibers ascend, ascend one level of vertebra, one level of spinal cord, or some uh, pain fibers they descend one level of the spinal cord and then it goes to the thalamus. So this ascending or descending, this extra, this this is called as tract of liso. Tract of liso. So pain fibers in the first order neuron they might ascend up or descend one level of spinal cord and then it cross and ascends up to the thalamus. So still it's not done. So in the second order neurons there are a variety of things that occurs. So in the second order neurons, so this is the reticular formation. So these fibers they all so 80 to 85 percent of fibers in the anterior lateral system. The spinothalamic tract they give collaterals here to the reticular formation, which we call the spino reticular fiber, spino reticular tract. So it gives collateral to the reticular formation, and this tract is important because it makes the brain alert. It makes the uh, whenever we have pain, we need to be awake. We can't sleep when we have a pain because we need to focus and we need to give full attention to the tissue damage or to that part. So that's why we need our brain to be alert and awake. So this is the role of the spino reticular fibers. So there are some collateral fibers coming from here, second order neuron. And then from the second order neurons, there are also some collaterals going to the cingulate gyrus. Okay, it goes to the cingulate gyrus. So where is the cingulate gyrus? Cingulate gyrus is located on the. So this is the. So where is the cingulate gyrus? It is located on the basal base part of the frontal lobe, on the base part of the frontal lobe, just above the corpus callosum. So here there is the cingulate gyrus. So here they are, they give also collaterals to the cingulate gyrus. So let's say this is the cingulate gyrus. So cingulate gyrus. Okay. So they also give to the cingulate gyrus. So this cingulate gyrus is important. This cingulate gyrus is important for all sort of emotions and behavior. Emotions and behavior. And this cingulate gyrus is also responsible for the autonomic functions. Also responsible for autonomic functions. So that's why when there is pain, there is a change in heart rate and change in respiratory rate. So this is because of the role of the cingulate gyrus in the autonomic functions. Apart from that, there are also few collaterals coming from this tract, from the anterolateral system. It, where it goes, it goes to the frontal lobe. Okay. So it goes to the frontal lobe from here. So you can say this, this frontal lobe. It can send some collaterals to the frontal lobe. So this frontal lobe is necessary for behavior patterns and where is uh, we call that for the also for behavior patterns and uh, emotional factor, motivational factor, reward center, everything in, in the especially to the nucleus accumbens. So this is also very important. And apart from that, it also carries give fibers to the it also carries five give fibers to the insular cortex insular cortex and also it gives fibers to the limbic system it okay so insular cortex and also it gives fiber to the to the another here thing okay to the And also the, it also insular cortex and cerebellum. 
So cerebellum. So this whole bunch of tract, it is called that's why it's called entolateral system. This is not a single tract going on. It is a whole system carrying spinothalamic, spinotectal, spinoreticular, and uh, anterior spinothalamic lateral, and there are multiple collaterals going out. So from the thalamus, from the second order neuron, it finally moves to the somatosensory cortex. It projects as coronal radiator. Okay, particularly to S1 and S2. So these fibers which are terminating in S1 and S2, they are important for what is called discriminative pain. They are important for discriminative sort of pain and they are called neospinothalamic tract. They are called as neospinothalamic tract. Neospinothalamic tract. And apart from that, we know some fibers goes to the frontal lobe. To the frontal lobe, they are called as paleospinothalamic tract. Paleospinothalamic tract. So you can see this whole thing, this anterolateral spinal, uh, this anterolateral system is consists of stars for the receptors here. And it goes like uh, from this is the first order neuron up to the dorsal horn. Then this is the second order neuron from the dorsal horn to the thalamus. And these are the third order neurons from the thalamus to the sensory cortex. So sensory cortex is in the post central gyrus and it is a look and it projects into the sensory homunculus of the brain. So we know the sensory homunculus just like motor homunculus it is also upside down. So apart from this system there are few other things that we have to note that how the pain is modulated. What is our self-analgesic system? So self-analgesic system. So what is the self-analgesic system? So in our body, there are some morphine-like substances, which are not morphine, but they are morphine-like substances like encephalins, endorphins, and dynorphins. So they are morphine-like substances, and they act on the same receptor where the morphine also acts like the opioid receptors opioid receptors okay so what is this self analgesic system that whenever there is any sort of pain whenever this type c c fibers and this a delta fibers are stimulated then this encephalins and endorphins and dynorphins they also come into the play okay so what happens here okay From the periaqueductal gray matter, this is periaqueductal gray matter. Okay, I need some space here. So let's say this periaqueductal gray matter, which is a periaqueductal gray matter means around the cerebral aqueduct, there's some neurons. Okay, and then periventricular gray matter that is around the third ventricle. So around the third ventricle. Okay, there's periventricular gray matter, ventricular gray matter, periaqueductal gray matter. So when this they are also give when these fibers, pain fibers are going up, they are also innervating this system, innervating this periaqueductal gray matter and periventricular gray matter located in the brain stem. So what will happen? They send descending fibers. They send descending signals. So and this fibers which they send this and they what they release they release encephalins they release norepinephrine so this encephalins and norepinephrines are very very important because they act here and they reduce the pain signal so if we zoom this part okay if we zoom this part so this is the
So this is presynaptic. This is postsynaptic. So when this like now let's say this is A delta fibers which are responsible for fast pain because they are myelinated. So when this A delta fibers what they give? They give glutamate. They throw neurotransmitters called glutamate. Glutamate. And when the C fibers are stimulated, C fibers are stimulated, they release neurotransmitters called substance P. Substance P. So this substance P and this glutamate recept neurotransmitter they act on the other side and the receptors like NMDA receptors okay and action potential is trust and action potential develops and it and then the pain signal travels now what happens these descending fibers coming from the periventricular gray matter and periaqueductal gray matter they will inhibit both presynaptic and postsynaptic okay these fibers they inhibit this both presynaptic and postsynaptic by releasing encephalins so this control this descending pathway which really decrease the pain sensitivity is called gate control theory it's called gate control theory so this is once this is one method of self analgesic system the second part of self analgesic system is that we have also some opioid like receptors we have some opioid like receptors some opioid like receptors in the both in presynaptic and postsynaptic okay let me make it here so so this is presynaptic and this is postsynaptic so apart from this gate control hypothesis we have some also opioid like receptors opioid receptors okay so in our body there whenever there is pain there is also some self release of encephalins and endorphins and dynorphins they are morphine like substances which are endogenously presented in our body produced in the body so they these are opioid like receptors so when they are released they so this is presynaptic okay this is presynaptic and this is postsynaptic so these encephalins and endorphins they attach to both presynaptic and postsynaptic mu receptors so what happens here so when they attach to this presynaptic part of this in the dorsal horn what happens here they block the calcium channels so there are plenty calcium channels here calcium channels so they block this calcium channels so now we know from the basic of the physiology that if the calcium if the calcium channels are not open means if there is if the calcium don't go from outside to inside the neurotransmitters like substance p or the glutamate they cannot be exo exocytosed so without calcium moving in the neurotransmitter that are presented here like substance p and glutamate they cannot be exocytosed they cannot be poured here they cannot be poured here so when these calcium channels are blocked because of the morphine attaching to the mu receptors or encephalins endorphins or dynorphin attaching to the mu receptors what happens the sick the release of substance p release of substance p and glutamate they are decreased so they are decreased in numbers so as a result the pain sensitivity or the pain signals that are going from the pre synapse to post synapse is significantly reduced that is how the morphine receptors or this uh, morphine act or the encephalins or endorphins or dynorphins or any sort of opium like substances they act here so they not only block the calcium channels so they block yes number one they block the calcium channels present in the presynaptic terminal they also block they also open the potassium channels in postsynaptic terminal 
so they opened up potassium channels in the post-synaptic tunnel. So as a result, plenty of potassium they escape outside. So plenty of potassium they escape outside. Now what will happen when the potassium escaping from the post-synaptic to here? So whole thing becomes hyperpolarized. Hyperpolarized. So this hyperpolarization in the post-synaptic terminal, it also decreases the sensitivity. It decreases the sensitivity, decreases the sensitivity of the pain. So this is also one method of self-analgesic system when, because in our body also we have endogenous productions of morphine-like substances which act on the same opioid receptors when, which uh, also bind with morphine if you give intrathecally, if you give intrathecally. And remember morphine is one injection that is, the, that is given to reduce the pain, to reduce the amount of pain. So how does it act? So when morphine is released, or when we give the injection of morphine intrathecally directly into the subarachnoid space, so what happens? They combine with mu receptors and they reduce the pain. So similar like that, our body also have an endogenous production of encephalins, endorphins and dinorphins. They are also morphine-like substances. So whenever there is pain, our body is also releasing these types of substances. They also act on mu receptors and they try to block the calcium channels and try to increase the potassium efflux, reducing the pain signals. So along with dorsal, uh, dorsal gate theory, we have also our have its own self-analgesic system. So this is also very, very important which in relation to the pain. So that's why training of pain or mindful training of pain is very important. So if you remain calm when you have pain, so these things will be released more. Any sort of stress or anxiety can increase the pain sensitivity because these things don't work when you are stressed. Okay, calmness and quietness of mind increase the more and more release of these morphine-like substances and can do self-analgesic-like system. So this is uh, this is about self-analgesic system. Apart from that, we have one more theory that is that now we know here in the self in the dorsal horn. In the dorsal horn, these fibers that are carrying the pain sensations, that are carrying the pain, this is one is A, A delta and C fibers. We know that in the dorsal horn, apart from that, there is another fiber that is going to the dorsal horn. That is the DCML, that is the fibers which are carrying the fine touch and pressure vibrations. So these are big, large fibers, thick fibers, myelinated fibers. Okay. So they are also going uh, to the thalamus where it crosses in the medulla. Okay. So these fibers, when they reach the dorsal horn, they also give collaterals. They also give collaterals. So these collaterals also help in decreasing the pain sensitivity. So that's why it's a common thing that whenever there is pain, we try to uh, rub the area. So when we are trying to rub the area, we are doing fine touch, means we are stimulating the DCML tract also. So when DCML tract is stimulated, it can also reduce the pain signal in this synapse, okay, by giving some collaterals, by inhibiting this passing of the pain signal. So this whole thing X takes place at the layer 2 and layer 3 of the spinal dorsal horn. Remember the dorsal horn is made up of 6 lamina. It is of 6 layers. The layer 2 and layer 3 is called substantia of gelatinosa and Rolando. It's called substantia gelatinosa of Rolando or simply SGR. So the second, lemon, second layer and the third layer, they are called as SGR. So most of the pain fibers, they goes, when they go to the dorsal horn, they go deep into the second layer and third layer. Okay. And here it's basically the, all these opioid systems, opioid receptors and the pain, the pre sinus mechanism is present. So when you write about self-analgesic system, make sure you write about this one is that when you are stimulating the DCML tract, okay, that is by a fine touch. And second is that there is descending pathways, okay, that is called dorsal gating theory, dorsal gating hypothesis actually, 
which are the descending fibers coming from the pre-equidactyl gray matter and periventricular gray matter and there is also locus ceruleus okay these are descending fibers and they release encephalins and epinephrines and stimulate the pain signals and the third property is that we have encephalins, endorphins and dinoferins which are endogenous morphine like substances produced in the body and attached to the mu receptors morphine is opioid receptors remember they inhibit they block the calcium channels and they open the potassium channels on the postsynaptic and block the calcium channels in the presynaptic so this is a self analgesic system of the anterolateral system